Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to OSI affiliates around the world. This is Hong Fu Deng. I'm going to be your host for this session. The mission of OSI is to build bridges among open source communities and foster connection, collaboration across borders. Our affiliate program is open for non-profit organizations, education institutions, user groups, open source projects, and communities from everywhere. Our members are widely recognized for their effort in advancing open source development in various areas around the world. And today we will hear from some of them. Let me uh, now introduce all our presenters we have here. First of all, we have um, Anna Roleda. She is the head of communications at Source Fabric. We have Miles Borins, the board member of OpenJS Foundation. Sami Fong, the founder of Open Source Hong Kong. Dev Goodkin, the executive director of the FreeBSD Foundation. Terry Keres, the vice president of engineering at the OpenStack Foundation. Mario Belling, the co founder of Force Asia. Samson Godi, co-founder of Open Source Community Africa. Otavio Santana, the vice president of Java User Society Brazil. And we have Mike Milinkovic, the executive director of Eclipse Foundation. At the end of this session, we hope that we can build a closer relationship with you all, establish an exchange platform, and potentially start some collaboration on projects. And uh, to um, let us um, get started with the session, first of all, I would like to invite our um, speakers to introduce themselves, tell us in which city you are based at the moment, and um, give us some updates about your organization. What are the highlights, the recent developments? Um, Anna, why don't you start first? Actually, I was hoping that someone else could go first because I've never, this is my first one of these calls. Um, so can I, can I, can you come back to me, please? Yeah, okay. So I would, I thought that maybe a soft fabric is quite new to the community here and you would like to talk about it. no problem. I saw a Samson raise his hand. Samson, would you like to go first? Yeah, I actually want to go first because I'm doing babysitting, so I don't want the kids to come. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I have a, yeah, so my name is Samson. Um, I'm currently in Port Harcourt, Nigeria. I'm currently building the Open Source Community in Africa. And I'm really excited to be here because um, it's really awesome to talk about open source. Um, so I don't know if I want to, sh can I share? I have like a slide I want to share to talk about the updates, if, if you can go on. Please, please go ahead. Okay, so I'm trying to look for me to share my screen. I don't think I have access to share the screen. Uh, okay, okay, do. Awesome. And for the viewers, there's a, a crisscross arrow X in the bottom right corner of the slide. You may need to hit that to make the slide large enough to actually see. Okay, can you, can you see my screen now? Can you see my screen? Yeah, we can see yeah. it. Too. Oh, awesome. Okay, great. So um, we, as, as you may know, the Open Source Community of Africa is a project that I co-founded in 2018 um, with the aim that I wanted people to, you know, people in Africa, particularly to, you know, not just know the, the, the definition of what open source is, but also in a way that they could, um, make, you know, the project better because I've been, you know, part of open source for, for about eight years now, and it just makes more sense to just start something great. Um, but one of the challenges that we wanted to focus on was the fact that there was a lot of, you know, community in the continent, but we wanted to do something different. You know, myself and my team 
And so we came up with this cool concept. I don't know if you could look at the, the screen right now. So on, on the top, you see Oscar, and then you see that we're currently pushing for two things, which is the community side and then the project side. And then on the community side, it's quite interesting because we kind of um, have like smaller chapter events. So what we do here is we give um, locals in different cities the opportunity to kind of like localize content and do something that, that fits the community. So we don't kind of like, Force topic or like you know some kind of a, a topic that it could do, but in a way that it could do something that fits the um, the project. Um, but the the festival was something that we did. Um, I think February twentieth to twenty second was the open, open source festival. So it's a festival open source festival on the continent, and it was really awesome. We got interesting support from organizations. So we hosted about eight hundred persons um, in out of the continent in Lagos, Nigeria, for about three days. And we discussed about open source things from open source hardware to design to to code contribution into programs. We also push for you know, open source program stuff like you know the Apache, some of code and Season Docs, which was really really one of the highlights of the event. Um, but on the project side, this is something that we're trying to do. You know, well, I don't want to say thanks to COVID, but COVID made a lot of things harder for us. So we kind of switch virtually to events. And at the moment, we're trying to create a platform where we could onboard interesting folks that are interested in open source to kind of have this whole boot camp where they would um, be creators of open source. Because mind you, um, not trying to do something new here. There are other people in Africa. In fact, there's a list on GitHub called Made in Nigeria. There's an awesome list of people. There's like a design tool from RegJS called Chakra UI. So there's like really awesome people doing a great job in the content already. We're just trying to make sure that we elevate that, that interest to make sure that a beginner can have an understanding of what open source license is, how to build an open source community, and also build an open source project. And in order for us to achieve that, we are currently building an army. I don't want to say an army in a scary way, but an army of you know advocates and also contributors. So we try to you know encourage them to contribute to you know large projects and also projects they're interested in, but also to drive some kind of advocacy. So meaning you know go speak at events, you know try as much as you can to share your passion. You know Ruth was one of them. It's basically spoke about how to approach beginners in open source, and she's been doing really awesome work. So that's something that we're we're, we're kind of really proud on the open source community in Africa. Um, so just some stats, um, at the moment we're in five countries, land cities, and over 8,000 plus members. Um, we kind of officially got this number before, I think sometime around 2019, and I feel like I think um, in 2020 we should be double the size by now, which is really awesome. So these are like some of the highlights of events we've done across the, the, the continent. So I'm in Kenya, Port Harcourt, Lagos, um, and, and also spread across. Um, so just for a brief, um, that you can do on the website oseafrica.org uh, on Twitter. You can follow us on Twitter or your Africa. Um, then if uh, we are currently uh, um, on that open collective platform, the open source collective platform as a way for us to raise money. So if you want to join us and support what we've been doing, you could you know come on the open source collective platform and share. Um, look for ways that we could reach out to you. Um, we could collaborate with you. So I think that's basically it from my end. I'm trying to make it as short as possible without getting touch from the kids. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Samson. So, um, Mike, if you are one of the most experienced. Would you like to go next? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Thanks. I'm, I'm um, <laughs> so um, uh, I'll, I'll try to keep it fairly short. My name is Mike Blankovich. I'm the executive director of the Eclipse Foundation. Um, the Eclipse Foundation has been around for 16 years. We're one of the sort of larger umbrella open source foundations. Uh, so we, it's trying to sort of talk about what we're doing from a project perspective is kind of hard when you have 375 projects. Um, but I'll try to just maybe touch on a couple uh, that I think are particularly interesting. Um, so as many developers know, Eclipse has its roots in developer tools. The Eclipse IDE is pretty well known um, around the world. Um, but what you might not know is that we're, we have projects that are building out an entirely new development platform um, for, for tooling for the web. Uh, so projects like Eclipse Thea, uh, which uses, reuses the Monaco editor that you might be familiar with from VS Code. Um, Eclipse Che, um, which is building out a web-based uh, tool set that runs on top of Kubernetes, um, are uh, basically building out an entirely new platform for developer tools um, that you might not be aware of. Another area that we spend a lot of time in at the Eclipse Foundation that you might not be aware of is IoT and Edge. Um, so we actually are the IoT at Eclipse.org is one of the 
largest open source communities related to the Internet of Things. Um, and then we also have a number of pretty interesting projects that are doing edge computing as well. Um, so highly um, encourage people to look up projects like Eclipse Cura, which gives you a, a way to build a complete platform for building industrial IoT gateways or um, Eclipse IO Fog, um, which is a complete stack for doing uh, for doing edge computing. Um, so that's sort of it on the project side. I think from an organizational perspective, um, you know, again, we've been around for 16 years and what, one, one of the things that's happening this year um, that's kind of new and interesting is we are picking up and moving the legal domicile of the organization um, from, um, from the US to Europe. Um, so Eclipse has been kind of an interesting thing. So I'm based in Ottawa, Canada, uh, as are most of the staff of the Eclipse Foundation. About two thirds of our staff are in Ottawa, one third in Europe. Um, and uh, we are, uh, but legally we're a US uh, non, uh, non, not for profit. Uh, in a month or so, we're going to be a Belgian um, not for profit. Um, and we're gonna be in the process of moving all of our sort of legal framework and governance framework um, from the US to, to Europe. And why are we doing that? Well, it turns out that uh, we did ran some numbers and we are basically already are one of the largest open source foundations um, in Europe based on the number of employees, the number of projects, 70% of our committers um, throughout the entire Eclipse community are based in Europe. Um, so we just bas basically decided to double down on the success that we're already having there and become a fully European organization. Um, and with that, uh, I thank you and uh, Hong, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you, Mike. Very exciting. A lot of things going on in Eclipse, as always. Um, Miles, would you like to go next? Sure. Hi, um, I'm Miles Borens. Nice to meet everyone. Um, I am a board member, cross-project council member, standards working group member at the OpenJS Foundation, who's the organization that I am representing today on this affiliate panel. The OpenJS Foundation um, exists as a neutral home and center of gravity for JavaScript development, and we host a number of different projects. Um, you may know, know some of our larger projects, including Appium, uh, AMP, Dojo, Electron, uh, jQuery, Node.js, and Webpack. Um, overall, I believe we have 30 plus projects um, within the foundation. The foundation is built um, on, a, on a bed of uh, a trying to create like egalitarian and open governance. Um, we have a cross project council that meets bi-weekly and those meetings are open to anyone to attend, um, whether or not you are a member of any of the projects in the foundation. Um, the affiliate membership that I have right now, for example, is set up through our standards working group who is chartered by our cross project council to maintain all of our relationships with other standards and foundations organizations. Um, so that's something that is able to exist uh, completely independently of both the board and the uh, top level community governed body, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm pretty excited about how open everything is. Um, as a neutral home for JavaScript, we, on top of having a number of projects, um, are building up uh, community initiatives as well. Standards is a great example of this. Um, getting involved in TC39, which is the standards body that standardizes the JavaScript language, can be a little bit harder uh, for folks to get involved in that aren't part of large organizations. Um, so we're setting up governance and infrastructure through an affiliate um, relationship with ECMA. Uh, to allow independents and college students and those who may not have access to participate in these spaces, uh, both mentorship and support to be able to go and get involved, um, which is something I'm particularly very proud of. Um, we're very interested in, in also like creating uh, sustainable models for open source, exploring both kind of like traditional foundation models, um, as well as like figuring out how does that work in conjunction with new funding models, uh, such as Patreon or Open Collective or um, other such uh, funding models. Um, we are under the umbrella of the Linux Foundation as one of the many foundations that kind of roll up through it. And so we work really closely with a number of different people. Um, I think that's a, a great like high level uh, overview of what we're doing as a foundation. Um, and you know, if folks have any questions uh, about OpenJS, I'm really happy to answer any of them. Um, we're a, a little bit of a newer foundation. We've only been around for about a year and a half. We were founded through the merger of the Node.js Foundation and the JS Foundation. Um, and as such, 
much. We're still in the process of like reevaluating our governance, still kind of like iterating on how things work. Um, so if you'd like to get involved, please show up. And if you have ideas about how we could do things better, uh, we're always all ears to, to hear it and iterate on our processes. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, uh, Deb, would you like to go next? Sure. Can you hear me okay? Okay. Um, <clears throat> so I'm Deb Goodkin, and I'm with the FreeBSD Foundation. And uh, we're a 501c3, which is a U.S. classification or tax classification for uh, being a nonprofit and for the public good. And uh, our whole or sole purpose is to support the FreeBSD project and community. So I'm here in uh, Boulder, Colorado, and that's where we're based. And, um, and yes, we did get quite a bit of snow <laughs> yesterday. Um, and we still have some on the ground out there and it's pretty cold. <laughs> but, um, but anyway, we were founded back in uh, 2000. So we're just celebrating our uh, 20th anniversary this year. And we're 100% funded by uh, donations. Um, we, so we, our whole purpose, like I said before, is to support the FreeBSD project, but we are independent of the project. So, um, unlike, so like the Eclipse Foundation, they have um, a bunch of projects under them, as Mike was talking about earlier. And, um, and so we're similar, except for we only have one project that we focus on, and that's our whole purpose. Uh, we're not an umbrella organization, so the project isn't underneath us. We're, um, I, I view us as being, a, you know, two separate organizations that are side by side, but still um, all we care about is the success of the project and supporting uh, the contributors and the development and um, advocacy that goes along with it. Um, we have 10 board members and all around the world. And we have uh, six staff members, but also uh, a lot of different contractors who work and support us in different efforts. And the, really the key areas that we support are, um, probably most of our funding goes to um, open source software uh, improvements. And so we do have software developers on staff and they'll do anything from stepping the uh, fix bugs to, um, implementing workarounds like you know security hardware uh, workarounds to implementing new features and functionality. Um, we also do a lot of advocacy for the project, and that's anywhere from uh, doing like this. I, I gave a short talk yesterday about the FreeBSD project, and we go to conferences around the world and talk about FreeBSD. We also do trainings and workshops. And we're working on providing more uh, content for for that as well as for um, classes at universities. Uh, we also provide legal support. We don't have lawyers on our team, but we do um, have the resources to help with if there's any questions on like patents. Uh, we can also engage in license agreements and we also own the trademarks for the project. So, um, so we're there to protect the trademarks. And uh, we support all the FreeBSD infrastructure. So we purchase hardware and support it all over the world. And, um, and then finally, we have um, a, a big effort going on with supporting the improvement of QA and CI and uh, providing a lot more automation. So, so really our purpose is to look at what are the needs of the project and especially the critical needs and what can we do to step in to help. And that's it for me. Um, you're muted. Uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> Otavio, would you like to go next? Oh, yes. Hello, hello, everybody. My name is Otavio Santana from So Javis Group. So, So Javis Group is a huge Javis group in Brazil. However, it's not just about help Brazilian Javis group, right? So, Java, so Java has been supporting several Java groups around the globe, such as 
conference in the whole Latin America. Uh, also, a uh, huge number of conferences to engage the open source. We are uh, executive member of the JCP. JCP is a huge organization behind the Java. And we have been helped the Adobe JSTAR, where we support several Java specifications, such as Mon API, Measurement API. And yes, we have supporting as well Eclipse Foundation with several members from SoJava, where we helping on the Java EE new home, so Jakarta EE, and for sure Eclipse Microprofile, Eclipse Collection, and Eclipse Genosic as well. Yeah, uh, let's go to Hong Kong and hear from uh, Samson, Sammy Fong. Hi, uh, hi, I am Sammy from, uh, uh, from Open Source Hong Kong. We promote and go the uh, open source community in our city, which are uh, called uh, open source project uh, with developers, users, companies, and organizations like uh, Mozilla, like Geelong, like uh, uh, WordPress, Drupal, and uh, DevOps, and also uh, 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 bot, uh, some op uh, open source blockchain project, project as well. We organized a uh, Hong Kong open source conference uh, since uh, uh, 2013 and PyCon Hong Kong since 2015. And we also organized uh, hackathons and monthly meetings as well. Uh, Hong Kong is an international city in Asia, which uh, which uh, Cantonese and English are our official language. So it attracts uh, more overseas visitors to uh, to visit our conference. So, uh, for example, a uh, uh, Hong Kong Open Source Conference we have a uh, uh, fifty uh, speaker every year, and and twenty of them are, are come from overseas uh, actually. So our conference are uh, but not just for local, it's also for the global community as well. So I hope that uh, we continue our work and help to go the uh, global and lo local open source community as well. We also have an uh, incubator pro uh, program and also we have a program for young to uh, to, to target different uh, different needs uh, in the society as well. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Sammy. It must be late in Hong Kong now, huh? What time is it over there? Uh, live, live, live. <laughs> I told you. Okay, Thierry, how about you? Where are you based? Would you want to go next then? Sure. Um, so my name is Thierry Carrez. I'm uh, based uh, in a small village in the middle of France. So hailing from there, it's daytime right now. So everything is good. Uh, I'm the Vice President of Engineering for the OpenStack Foundation. And the OpenStack Foundation is a nonprofit that was created in 2012, so eight years ago now, uh, initially to support, protect, and promote the OpenStack open source project. So very much started how the, the, the FreeBSD Foundation started as well. Um, the, uh, but now we're more generally supporting the idea of open infrastructure, which is uh, computing infrastructure built using open source components accessible to everyone and not just uh, a couple of very large companies based in the US or China. And we're helping our community operate those in production at a very large scale. So we continue obviously to support OpenStack, but we also support other projects like uh, Kata Containers or Airship or Zool continuous integration. Um, one specificity of, of our foundation is that projects must be openly developed and openly governed. Um, that means we do not really support open core or single vendor projects, only uh, really open collaborations. And we organize several events in support of those goals. Uh, obviously, those events were highly disrupted by the coronavirus situation, but I think that affects everyone. Um, the summit is our big uh, conference where everyone gathers and we do traditional presentations and we'll have one in October. Um, if you want to learn more, it's a good 
it's a good way to get introduced uh, to what, what we are providing. Uh, we also run uh, another event called the Project Teams Gathering, which is a venue for contributors to our projects to meet uh, in person and get things done. And finally, we also have another event called Open Dev, which is more about community of practices trying to share their experience with their peers. So it's more like a, an open discussion format where workshop where uh, where people um, discuss around a third, certain uh, third, certain topic and uh, and try to get as much uh, uh, experience sharing as in the open as possible. So I'll keep it quick and uh, that's about it. Thanks. Uh, I believe Anna is also uh, based in Europe, right Anna? Are you ready now to start? Yes, thank you for coming back to me. Uh, yes, uh, so I'm based in Prague. Um, Source Fabric uh, was started here and it's still our headquarters and in fact um, I don't know if folks are familiar with Source Fabric. We develop open source tools for the media. And we actually had our 10th anniversary as a company this year. And uh, it's evolved quite a bit, even just recently. Um, last year, we, we wound down our German operations, which at one time were um, almost as big as the Czech side. Um, and the other thing that has evolved uh, is, is different maybe too if, if anyone has had heard of source fabric before we we really started at with a with a broad portfolio of open source projects for media so everything from book publishing to internet radio um we have a live blogging tool and then there was also um superdesk which is you know it's become our flagship solution for news organizations it's it's a it's sort of a CMS, it's a, it's a it's a headless CMS, so, but it also coordinates workflows. So it's this kind of all-in-one kind of tool. And uh, just given both organizational pressures as well as you know the market situation, we really are now just focusing mainly on on Superdesk. And uh, and our clientele, you know, being the news media, that's this weird situation um, with the pandemic. On the one hand, people are reading more news than ever before but not paying for it. And so, so our, our customers are not in great shape. Um, and we are, we are really trying to kind of um, adjust to that and, and try to develop uh, different versions of uh, Superdesk, for example. I, I think a, a SaaS uh, idea, maybe a, like a simpler version. These things are, are kind of being discussed, but I think the other thing that we could really um, we would really like to to kind of reboot is our developer relations and our, our open source community relations. Um, we, we do have some contributors to our projects, but I think um, you know at least in my position, of course, that's I'm trying to communicate with the outside world. It would be really helpful for me if any if any of you. Um, can suggest uh, forums or ways to reach out or or just to you know just to connect and kind of uh, get that connection going again be really helpful thanks yes so this is exactly what we have the session for we want to share uh, tips and also try to connect everyone uh, i think we have one more um, person to go and then we can open the conversation yeah mario yes hello everyone so um I'm representing here the uh, FOSS Asia Community and Summit. So basically, um, FOSS Asia, right? Like uh, apparently I'm not from Asia, but uh, I used to live many years, for example, in uh, Vietnam and like spent uh, years in Singapore and so on. So we have a very um, kind of like uh, international community all uh, over Asia. And um, already back in 2009, we said, hey, how can we connect with everyone? We have these awesome events now here like state of the source but we also have foster in europe we have other events in the us and um, our feeling was at that time and um, there wasn't so uh, much going on in asia no places where we can like bring people together so we thought then let's just do it and we got together with um, other people from um, across uh, um, yeah the continent like for example hong fook of course and, uh, and started the FOSS asia summit and that was in 2009 2010 then the first larger event and uh, that was really great so um, 
it takes place every year. It took place, for example, in Cambodia, in Vietnam, and um, yeah, we have events in China, for example, the Open Tech Summit in China, and uh, in, in Shenzhen, right? Like a lot of friends from um, Hong Kong uh, came over last time from Hong Kong Open Source and so on. So we're trying to overcome also these uh, political divides and, and challenges that we see, and, and we try just to continue to bring everyone together. And when people come together, what happens is they have ideas. And, uh, and they say, yeah, let's do something, let's code something. A lot of people have ideas. For example, one idea was this uh, pocket science lab here, and that was already 2015. So where somebody said, and hey, we need open more to do more about open science. So we made some applications, and then finally we talked to developers of hardware, and uh, yeah, People collaborated, and in the end, right, a few years later, what comes out is like an open hardware board, for example. Another thing that I want to mention quickly is um, that people say, hey, we should use open tools, free and open tools when we organize events. A lot of cool Python tools out there, for example. And uh, we also started one 2015, um, which is Eventia. A lot of people here use it. We already had some very good feedback, uh, bug reports, feature requests. So a lot more what we can do. And uh, yeah, we invite everyone to install it and also set it up yourself. So it's on our GitHub repository. Um, there are also mobile apps and so on. And um, we're actively developing it and actually have hired uh, even a few people um, who uh, work on this full time um, at the moment. There are many, many repositories, but we're actually connecting with a lot of different communities. And of course, like a lot of projects that were mentioned here in the call, we use it, um, Kubernetes, um, things what you do at the Eclipse Foundation and so on. So thank you very much for all these projects and great to connect with you uh, here in this call. And uh, yeah, please check out what we do. And I would like to invite you to the next Force Asia Summit, which will take place in March. Um, and um, like we will make it as a mixed online and uh, um, like face-to-face -face event because nowadays traveling is difficult, but we have many local groups that can still meet, for example, in Vietnam, where the situation is not uh, that bad. So um, we will be able to use online tools and mix them with, with the offline tools. And I think we are um, really benefiting from this event here and um, from learning how to run an event uh, online and mixed uh, with face-to-face -face meetings here. So thank you very much. Uh, for this opportunity to participate. Yeah. So uh, now, as we hear from everyone, uh, so the conversation. I want to open the discussion here. As we mentioned earlier, uh, Terry also put a comment on the chat. Overcome a TV show boundaries are like a common pattern across affiliates, right? So we all together in one network. We all cared about open source, but it's tricky. So sometimes meet here and there in conferences. But what is uh, the right across the model where we can collaborate? So we want to hear from you. What are your challenges? Is there anyone in the call now that you work together and would like to collaborate? in the future. I heard that uh, Mike and um, uh, Otavio, they already have example. They used to work together on some projects, that's what I understand. How about the audio audio? Do you have something that you uh, that you would like to share? How do you see a, a collaboration model move, moving forward? Or you want to learn more about um, soft fabrics? Yeah, I think it's also a new project and what's going on in Hong Kong. So I invite you to have the open conversation um, uh, together and also the audience, uh, you are free to, to, to join in. You can also put your question on the share notes. Yeah. Uh, I'll talk first. So to, with regards to collaboration, it's important to note that we already do um, have a lot of collaboration across our various organizations just by virtue of the fact that we are all using open source licenses. Um, and, you know, of course, that's the core mission of the OSI and the biggest service that it provides to the community is, is helping uh, validate that, uh, that the licenses that we use uh, enables the kind of permissionless sharing and innovation that makes the open source community tick. Um, so, uh, so, you know, there's, there are artificial boundaries uh, because in some of the sort of, you know, friction that happens between organizations is because places like Eclipse and Apache and so on have sort of well-defined ways of what we mean, it, you know, what does it mean to be an Eclipse project or an Apache project? So there's some sort of cultural impedance mismatch. 
but it, but at the same time, um, you know, the Eclipse Foundation uses a ton of software from places like Apache um, and the Linux Foundation and and many others, and um, and you know, I'm sure uh, many other folks use use stuff from Eclipse. So uh, just sort of start off by saying that yeah, that there there are some. Um, and maybe Thierry can kind of elaborate on what he meant by artificial boundaries. And yet there, of, of course, it's you know it's not a perfect world. But just wanted to start off by saying that the licenses that we use and sh uh, enables an enormous amount of sharing and collaboration that would be impossible without them. And uh, you know, by the way, thanks for the OS to the OSI for helping enable that and, and being on on mission on that for over twenty years. Yeah, I mean, um, I'll give some precision on what I meant about artificial boundaries. It's more about around uh, uh, boundaries between countries and cultures and the fact that we all want to collaborate together at the same time, but it's very challenging to organize uh, a, a community, an open source community that is truly worldwide. Uh, it, it's relatively easy to to uh, like Europe and the US, it's relatively easy, but as soon as you add China or India to the mix, it becomes a real challenge. Uh, getting people to, to meet, uh, getting people to agree on things, uh, using the same tools. And, um, and, and I can see also how the political context, uh, the political context sometimes uh, distracts us from, from this, uh, collaborations without boundaries, you know, uh, and, and like, uh, the Eclipse Foundation moving from the U S to Europe to get closer to that where their, the, the main contributor base is, um, or, uh, or us having to try to visit a lot of countries with, with the events that we organize so that nobody is left behind. Um, it would be easier if the earth were flat, but it's not the case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If only we all lived in the same time zone. <laughs> and spoke the same language and shopped at the same stores and ate at the same restaurants. <laughs> but it would be conference time all the time. <laughs> yeah, and I find it even more challenging during the COVID time how you plan to travel to places to meet people. What can do, we do to, to keep up with the engagement? As you mentioned, it's difficult to connect with people in um, in China or somewhere in Asia. Uh, Sami, are you facing the same challenge? How do you um, keep being, uh, yourself engaged and connect uh, Hong Kong um, society with other projects? Are there any collaboration going on between you and somebody here already? Uh, uh, actually, I think that uh, Hong Kong is, is, is also uh, mainly affected by the coronavirus pan, pan, uh, pan, pandemic. So, uh, so we we only can organize the uh, events and our activities uh, online and, vir and, vir vir and virtually. Just like uh, 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 I will go to organize the uh, PyCon Hong Kong in November, it is also fu fully uh, 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 hosted in uh, vir in virtual space. Yeah. So I think this. Uh, uh, um, uh, main concern about our activities this year, but uh, but uh, but, uh, but I don't know uh, what's happened and, and what is the change in Hong Kong uh, after the the uh, the coronavirus pandemic. So even we don't know what happens in Hong Kong this month. <laughs> yeah. So let let's see what's happened. <laughs> I guess to the whole the whole community right now we have a bunch of online conference right so I think that's the opposite right now we are like uh, over helmets of uh, conference meetups online meetups because right now it is easier to bring some people to Brazil virtually right so mm -hmm. yeah. I can invite some people from Europe to just do a presentation. The biggest issue right now is just the time zone, right? Because Brazil, we are uh, right now. It's 11 a.m. Probably it's a little bit late on um, Europe and early to U.S. But beside that, is 
it's easier to bring more people to meetups, conference, and it makes it hard to coordinate too much conference that's happening right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Actually, I think it's been kind of, uh, sorry, go ahead, Sammy. Uh, yeah, yes, also, uh, 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 yes, also uh, advantage in, in this case because uh, we, we move everything to, to, to the virtual, virtual, uh, virtual space. Uh, uh, actually, uh, I, I also organized the, uh, another PyCon uh, Hong Kong Spring versions in, in May this year. Uh, I, I, I tried to uh, collect more speakers from, 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 from other countries. So yes, the time zone is, the, uh, is, is one of the concerns. So, so yes, I, I think uh, uh, more time to to uh to do the uh, conference starting from a uh, morning in Hong Kong and then uh uh in the line of the Hong Hong Hong, Hong Kong we I also need to host uh, uh, uh some session from the uh, overseas speaker from just like you all uh, and also American as well yeah so it's it's a challenge to, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we've noticed like so we, we're making EclipseCon virtual this year and the registrations are way higher than we have in the past for um for the in in-person event and the thing that i find really intriguing is something like 80 percent of the registrations so far are new people who have never been to an EclipseCon before and so there's pluses and minuses in a lot of the different things that are happening and one of the pluses i think is is that we're because we're switching everything to virtual um, it's easier to attract, in some ways, uh, easier to attract new people um, and, and make contact with folks that might not have been able to travel to an in-person event. So it's, you know, of course, lots of things are changing, but some of the things are, some of the results are positive as well as, as negative. And of course, I miss uh, sitting down and having a beer with somebody because that's, uh, that's, you know, the, sort of the definitely part of being human. Um, and part of building the human relationships that keep our communities going. Um, but there are some pluses to the changes as well. Yeah, I don't know if I can comment. I think I, think I agree there because the, the same thing um, I've been sort of like questioning, because again, it's a large continent, right? So 1.3 plus billion people. And I just live in one side of the continent with, you know, different time zone. I think there's up to about four, Four time zones in Africa, and then like a lot of languages. So what I would say, uh, so just to address um, Henry Thierry's um, question, I think or statement. Yeah, I would say that you you will be seeing a lot of folks coming from the continent Africa because, you know, one of the challenges of in-person conference was the the difficulty of flying over. Like personally, I travel a lot, so I spend on an average of uh, ten hours to fly to the U.S. and maybe fewer, depending on where I'm going in Europe. But one of the hardest things that I've seen um, a lot of contributors, particularly maybe it might be something uh, you might have seen in your organization, is the fact that it's very difficult for some Africans to get visa to fly down to Europe, which is which is you know it's something that I don't think would 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 stop anytime soon. But I would say um, you know like the event itself, you've seen you know great representation. Um, but for us um, in in the open source into African space, we've been having some challenges because. Um, we're, we're again struggling to have one event where you know folks from South Africa, you know Kenya, in West Africa, and also North Africa can you know all come together to have a conversation. But there's always this issue of you know language because in the northern part of the country, the continent is heavily influenced by Arabic. Why some places in in, in um, Eastern Africa is yeah English, but huge Swahili. And West Africa is a bit of a disaster because there's Portuguese, there's, there's French, there's English. You know, there's like a lot of languages there, which is a bit crazy. Um, but what I think one of the things that we've been um, encouraging folks within the community is to go and you know apply to speak at events um, to also share things that have been working on. Uh, you know, there have been great lists from folks from the continent already in those events itself, which has been really awesome. So if you, this is kind of like an ask for me. So if you're interested in trying to understand the space more on the continent uh, you can feel free to reach out to me or to reach out to oscar uh, info at oscar.org i could drop in a chat or you could 
follow me on Twitter and ask me the question because it's a it's a huge space to 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 figure out all along. I'm still figuring out something though. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at the time. So I, I I want to go back to the question that uh, Anna Anna has already done and, and see if we can uh, give some feedback. Uh, Anna, you um, was asking uh, to get some resources and connect back with the community. Would you like to um, add anything there? And if uh, the people here can provide some input. Yeah, um, I mean, my disadvantage is that I'm not I'm not a developer myself. Um, so I'm just trying to think of what would be relevant. I mean, we mostly develop in uh, Python um, and uh, JS and React. And those are the things that come to mind first. And apologies if um, I got anything wrong there. But uh, yeah, I think that's and, and I think with our um, our publishing solutions, we're really looking towards more progressive web app uh, technology. So um, yeah, and anything also that kind of brings together uh, you know news organizations or media technology and open source um, would be helpful to folks know anything there. Mm -hmm. Do we have uh, anyone here in in, uh, uh, in the call knowing any uh, similar organization that uh, working on uh, open source publishing uh, solution or media field that we can um, have to connect uh, with Anna, perhaps in your. Um, so I know there is a group in Belgium. Actually, there is the uh, open publishing uh, group from Constant. I don't know if you um, are aware of them, but uh, they 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 used to hold the um, Libre office over there, and there are quite a bunch of people working in that. So I can look up uh, again and see if I I can uh, connect you over there. Yeah. So let's. That would be great. Yeah, and I'll sorry, I'll just put my my email in the chat. So if anybody thinks of anything later, they can they can send it on. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Can um, can I ask a question? Of course, Lee. Okay. So it's actually a question for Mike, and I'm curious at um, if if most of you are based in Ottawa, why you became a U.S. based corporation, and then <laughs> second, um, I didn't catch why you're moving to Belgium, Belgium. So, uh, so it was actually the other way around. Uh, so, okay, it's well, the original Eclipse project, um, the, the what became the Eclipse IDE. Um, the people who built that were about two thirds in Ottawa, one third in Switzerland. Um, and when they went to recruit, they created the Eclipse Foundation and went to recruit for an executive director. I threw my hat in the ring, and I'd had a previous uh, affiliation with with the team. And then ended up getting the job, so it was more like the other way around. the 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 Eclipse Foundation had already been legally created, and they recruited me as the executive director. And then I built the team around. <laughs> around. I wasn't moving, so. And then, and the move to Europe was basically motivated because um, we we got challenged in a board meeting about, hey, you know, Eclipse Foundation is doing all kinds of stuff in Europe. Take a look at and how you could do more. And we found out that. 70% of our paying members are in Europe, 70% of our committers are in Europe, one third of our staff is in Europe. Why, and we actually, and the European Commission seemed to be very interested in, in, in a lot of open source initiatives. So we came to the conclusion that Europe could use a, an open source foundation of international reach and reputation. And so we decided that, hey, let's just double down on this. Um, and so, uh, it's always nice to think that there's a in these days that there's a sort of a geopolitical backstory to uh, to these kinds of things, but it really was basically a business decision. It's like we 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 came to the realization that we had gradually become European and decided to just sort of take the final step. Um, and and it's also an interesting differentiator because you know the Linux Foundation, the Apache Software Foundation, the Mozilla Foundation. Not only are they you know U.S. based, they're all California based. Um, so it's uh, just a, it's, so it's an interesting way to be a little bit different. Are you in a, like and are you going to keep your US based um, organization or are you moving 100% to Europe? It's yeah, good, 
This is a process, not an event. Um, <laughs> but yes, the goal is we eventually will become 100% European. I just couldn't tell you, I, just, I, I can't tell you how long that process is going to take. Okay, okay, thank, okay. You. thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. Uh, I think, Jen, do we still have time? I think I got a signal that we uh, need to get ready for the um, the next session. Um, we have five minutes remaining in this session and then a five minute break till the next. Okay, cool. Thank you. Okay, so let me see if we have any questions um, from the audience. Let me look at the chat. Need to go to contact. But when was under the limit of the let's do it in the chat. Okay, so um, uh, so OSI is the place where we uh, what we can help you. So um, because of the time zone, as you mentioned, we also try to uh, engage with all the org. We we not be able to get everyone here, but uh, you know we are the place of contact. If you um, at one point want to establish connection with all the org within our network, we'd be very happy to be um, the bridge and that help people to to collaborate and work on um, uh, work together on more projects um so i i don't see any question on the chat uh, well i would be um interested maybe if um um we just share like uh, as of as final words what's our plan for the next few months um and what's the plan of others um as as this progresses for example i also find it uh, interesting apart from the um, challenges of running online events and then you know travel challenges i think more or less we are more and more aware of this but uh, how do we come um, like uh, uh, social challenges i mean like we see what's happening in the us and uh, we see what's happening in hong kong and uh, maybe can we do anything i mean like also everywhere in the world right parts of europe and brazil and so on so what can we also like for example um support other communities here in that way that we are linked through with the source i osi because i think green open source is always also a um like there's a motivation behind it people you know have this idea of sharing instead of only doing competition we collaborate with each other and we share and um, it's kind of a positive mindset and how can we transfer this mindset and how can we maybe help each other possibly. Maybe it's a bit too much in a few words, but like I would be interested. Yes, I think it's a great suggestion to end the session. So what is your plan in the upcoming months or next year? And is there um, uh, anything that you want the community to help you or any challenge that you'd like to, to raise? So I guess uh, each person can take a minute for this uh, ending words. Well, I'm not on mute, so I'll go first. <laughs> uh, so upcoming events and, and uh, topics, finish, you know, this migration to Europe, of course, is consuming a lot of time um, at the organizational level. Uh, EclipseCon is coming up in October, and that's going to be a, um, a big uh, focus area. And we're really looking forward to gathering as much of our community as we can um, in October at EclipseCon. Uh, and then, um, you know, in, in terms of the community, um, you know, if you're thinking of bringing an open source uh, project to a foundation, uh, please keep us in mind and, and give us a give us a drop us a line and maybe uh, we can talk to you about why you might want to bring your project to the Eclipse Foundation. Uh, in Hong Kong, uh, uh, we are going to organize a PyCon Hong Kong fair uh, uh, in November. So we we so we. So we will start the uh, call for proposal uh, this week. Yeah, and uh, hopefully uh, 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 we uh, uh, we will uh, uh, do some planning for next year as well. Um, oh. am uh, am I am I looking forward uh, how? How how to organize a hackathon as soon as possible? Yeah, because during 
to current pan pan pandemic situations, it is uh, difficult to organize a hack farm. Yeah. Um, for the OpenStack Foundation, the next a big step is our event, the Open Infrastructure Summit that will be virtual in October, uh, the week of the 19th. Um, I put the link in the in the shared notes. Uh, we should we should announce the new new uh, Open Infrastructure projects being hosted and supported by the foundation at that at that time. So lots of work as well. And like we said, not being able to see each other in person is not really. Uh, helping in uh, driving those ma major changes. I uh, <laughs> I feel for Mike doing a, a move of the foundation from the US to Europe uh, in, a, in a time where travel is so difficult, but um, that's the nature of the game. So good luck. I think we have time for one more to jump in and say what their plans are, and then we need to wrap this one up. OK, I'll okay. jump in. Oh. <laughs> Is, oh, there's two of us. He wins. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Um, <laughs> thank you. Okay, I'll go really quick. Um, so, so things that we're doing since um, most of the BSD events were uh, were canceled this year is uh, we've taken um, amongst ourselves to start a um, more like online content with. Uh, we have a free BSD Friday series which has introduction, uh, free BSD topics and to introduce new people to FreeBSD. And we're going to start a Mythbuster Monday on um, bashing all these FreeBSD myths out there. And uh, we're going to hold our first virtual summit. And, um, and that'll be a developer vendor summit. And then some of our challenges is just continuing to look for more contributors as well as to um, fundraise, since we're always trying to uh, reach out to corporations to, to give back. Thank you. OK, thank you very much, everyone, for your time. And uh, looking forward to attend to all the events. Please put your uh, note into the, into the share notes. And we will uh, see you again. Ciao, ciao.